Good morning, my friends, or good afternoon, whenever you happen to be listening to this. Today, we're going to talk about volcanoes, and it's in the context of Indonesia's power. Now, a lot of people who have volcanoes may feel a little shy about them because they bring chaos, they bring tragedy, and especially if, as we do here in Indonesia, we have 34% of the world's active volcanoes, we might feel particularly shy about them. We know that they cause destruction, but I'm here to tell you that they're one of the most wonderful and fascinating of natural phenomena. And we should indeed be very proud of these volcanoes, not only for what they've done here in the nation, but beyond the frontiers of the nation itself. They have affected our not only understanding of ourselves as a planetary people, but they've also affected our evolution. And I'm here to talk to you about a few famous volcanoes and a few less famous ones. And let's begin with perhaps the biggest of all, which was Lake Toba, the Toba volcano in central Sumatra that erupted 72,000 years ago with such force that six inches of depth of effluent of volcanic ash was deposited on eastern Africa all over India, all over the Indian Ocean, and also a large part of China. For the first year, it is believed that the entire planet was darkened for a whole year, so you couldn't see the sun. And for the first decade, the first 10 years, the planet was plunged into a volcanic winter. And the temperature throughout the whole planet was changed for a thousand years. So this was a great stress on evolutionary survival. And it is believed that not only were there bottlenecks in various species, but particularly in mankind himself, Homo sapiens. That was not so old 72,000 years ago. And it's thought that the entire population of humans was reduced to 10,000 individuals, which is about 2,000 mating pairs. So it is thought that that is one of the reasons why there are so many hominids, pre-humans, that found themselves in Sunderland 50,000 years ago. And this has left, of course, the largest crater lake in the world. It's 100 kilometers long up in Sumatra. It's by far the largest crater lake in Southeast Asia. And it is also extremely deep, 1,500 feet deep. And there was such a powerful explosion that not only did it affect the species throughout the planet, but it sharply divided the types of wildlife that you find north and south of Lake Toba. So indeed, here was an Indonesian volcano that affected the course of evolutionary history of our own particular species. Another volcano from Indonesia of great power and importance, of course, is Banda, because it's in the environment of the unique volcanic chemistry of the Banda volcano in the middle of the Banda Sea in the Moluccas that produced nutmeg, the gold of the spice trade. Now you might say that's a two-edged sword because it did attract the first colonialists here, but it also drew Europeans into the age of discovery. The first time really that we began exploring the whole planet and we circumnavigated the planet as a result of our search for nutmeg, a powerful and important spice that was not only worth its weight in gold in Europe for a very long time, but was also thought to be a cure for the plague, the great plague of Europe. You required nutmeg. And of course, nutmeg preserved your food across the seasons. So that is a powerful and extraordinary volcano, which is extremely beautiful. If one comes to Banda, one sees this historic volcano still smoking, rising up there in the heart of the Banda Sea. It's one of the great things to see. Now, we should remember that volcanoes are very beneficial. Certainly, they bring tragedy and disruption, but they also extend the land for growing things on. They provide extraordinarily healing mud baths in certain regions. And they, apart from bringing great fertility to this land, which is why it's supported so many great kingdoms in the past, 
It, also, we find volcanoes that erupt gold and indeed diamonds. Two famous gold erupting volcanoes are Mount Erebus on the Antarctic continent and also Galeras in Colombia. And then we have diamonds, of course, produced by the great Russian volcano on the Kamchatka Peninsula, which produces diamonds. We think that both diamonds and gold are produced here by Indonesian volcanoes. Uh, have we know that gold is found in the region. So there is great strength and power in these things. Now, perhaps the world's most famous Indonesian volcano is Krakatoa which erupted in 1883. Four cubic meters of the Earth's crust were thrown up into the atmosphere. A shock wave went seven times around the world. 20 centimeters tall was the tidal wave that actually swept up the English Channel, having rounded South Africa and gone all the way up the Atlantic Ocean. There was a 40 meter high tidal wave locally. In fact, one of the Dutch Perkinier controllers was on the top of a hill in Lampung. The village was beneath him. And he watched the tidal wave rise up the mountain all the way to his feet and took the flower pots just underneath his house and withdrew again with the entire village. And he was the only person left alive on that hill. There were great floating islands of pumice stone that you could walk on, floating volcanic pumice stone. And famously, they bore the bleached bones of victims 7,000 miles across the Indian Ocean to deposit them on the shores of Madagascar. The thing about Krakatoa was that it was the first time or shortly after the first time that they'd brought in the international telegraph system into the world. So we knew where it was. We knew the source of this amazing eruption. And it's strange that it was a premonition of what would happen less than a hundred years later when we humans walked on the moon for the first time, we looked back and we saw ourselves rise as a single bubble of life. So Krakatoa more than any other volcano, woke us up to the fact that we are one. And anything of great power that happens in one part of the world will affect any other part of the world. The strange thing is, why was Krakatoa the most famous, and indeed still is the most famous of Indonesia's volcanoes, when only 68 years earlier, Tambora volcano in Sumbawa Island not very far east of Bali, erupted with four times the force of Krakatoa. Well, the reason is because the international telegraph system hadn't come in yet, and although tremendous disruption and weather patterns changed in Europe and all the Northern Hemisphere, nobody knew what the source was. Now, this great eruption of Tambora, it uh, extinguished a civilization a language, a culture. It deposited vast amounts of ash also all over the Far East. There was a nuclear winter here for several years. Had the wind been blowing in the opposite direction, had it been a northwest rather than a southeast monsoon, Tambora's ash would have covered the island of Komodo and we would not see any more Komodo dragons but it didn't, and we survived. So that is one of the great volcanic eruptions. In fact, it's uh, the largest eruption, they think, in 7,000 years. Which brings us, I suppose, there are mud volcanoes, rather wonderful mud volcanoes throughout Indonesia, which you can swim and bathe in. You can also dive to active volcanic craters off Sulawesi and see what it's like when the inside of the earth bubbles out in fire underwater. You've also got the extraordinary three crater, three colored lakes of Kelimutu in Flores, a great mystery for volcanologists because it is one caldera, but it has three lakes in it and they have different colors which are always changing. 
The level of those lakes does not rise or fall hardly at all, very little indeed, and yet there they are changing through blues and greens and whites and purples. Great mystery for volcanologists. Now, let us think of, well, a quick word about Merapi, because that has been going on very recently with great force and great destruction. But remember, Borobudur, which is in the shadow of Merapi, was built in about 800 AD. Okay, it was built during the Silendra Empire. But the people who actually built it, who actually worshipped there, who actually designed it, they were wiped out by an eruption of Merapi that occurred shortly after the building of that extraordinary monument. Borobudur remained under volcanic ash and then great jungle for nearly a thousand years until during the time of the brief British interregnum, Sir Stamford Raffles had it dug up and revealed as this astonishing, massive, largest religious structure in the Southern Hemisphere. And Although there are many stories of many other wonderful volcanoes, rather unique, fascinating ones here in Indonesia, I've only just learned about a rather remarkable event because in the samplings of the ice found in the Antarctic and the Arctic, there are signatures of specific volcanic eruptions that they know occurred at certain times in history. And in 1258, there had occurred an eruption that is still marked in the sediment of ice, especially in the Arctic. Nobody knew where it came from, and only recently has it been discovered that that volcanic eruption was twice as big as Tambora, which in turn was four times bigger than Krakatoa. And that eruption was here in Lombok. It was the mother volcano behind the great Rinchani volcano, Samalas it's called. And it blew up, they think, with the largest force of any volcano in the last 7,000 years plus. So it was only a hundred years after that that in Europe we had the great plagues, a great series of them. And from only 15, this went up in 1257. And in 1258, there are signs of immense amount of deaths in Europe. Uh, vast uh, graveyards with hundreds and hundreds of people's remains in them. That might have been the result of this volcano in Lombok, just next door to Bali. So listen, dear Indonesia, you should be proud of your volcanoes. They are reminders of the broader picture that all mankind and all his works are moving along on these floating continents. They subduct, they liquefy into the Earth's mantle, and they arise elsewhere to flower in time again. This is a reminder of the magnificence of the broader picture of our planet. So go and have a look at these extraordinary volcanoes.